Dorian is still delivering Category 5 winds to Grand Bahama this morning with winds of 165 miles per hour and a pressure of 916 millibars. At 9am Eastern Time it was 26.8 degrees north, 78.3 west. On the CDPS scale still the conditions are extreme. Uh, stage 8 now, it's gone down a little bit thanks to a lot of the rainfall having already fallen. Still a lot more to come, up to 20 inches in the region. Catastrophic. Stage 8 is still extremely high. Looking at how the storm is right now, there it is with the wind field. Um, still a Category 5. It is beginning to weaken just a little bit, but it is still going to absolutely demolish anything in its way. It's 28 miles from Freeport which will be experiencing hurricane conditions, 109 miles from West Palm Beach, 132 from Fort Pierce, 224 from Orlando and 320 from Jacksonville. Tropical storm force winds are beginning to occur along the coast of Florida at this time. Hurricane warning in effect for Grand Bahama, the Abacos Islands, Jupiter Inlet, the Volusia Brevard Line. Hurricane watch all the way up to St. Mary's River. Tropical storm watches and warnings also in effect further south. A storm surge warning in effect from Lantana to the Volusia Brevard Line and a storm surge watch all the way up to St. Mary's River as well. And on the southern side down to Deerfield Beach which is where that tropical storm warning begins. Over the next few days, this is what we expect from the rainfall totals. Uh, pink areas being three inches or higher, so all along the east coast of the United States, perhaps as far as Norfolk, Virginia, could get huge amounts of rainfall from this storm, depending on exactly what the track is looking like. I must say, with the latest information, it's showing that hurricane winds will probably happen along the coast of Florida, and we can't rule out a hurricane landfall in North Carolina. Sea surface temperatures are around 28 or 29 degrees Celsius at this time, which is still extremely warm for the storm and has been pretty constant the whole time. Looking at the trajectory then on the GFS uh, model forecast, you can see here the yellow areas being hurricane force winds and they're hugging the Florida coast by the middle of the week and then turning round towards the northeast, really following the coastline. Uh, weakens a little bit, landfall according to GFS near Wilmington and then emerging again with a huge wind field and still hurricane force winds as it passes rather close to Cape Cod uh, at the end of the week. That's just one model scenario but there is decent confidence up to the three day mark. Chances of tropical storm force winds then now look like this, obviously pretty much assured in Freeport, 94% at West Palm Beach, 93 at Melbourne, 66 at Jacksonville and 74% at Charleston. Chances are also increasing further north at this time as well. And this is what the models are saying all together here. Um, most of them never foresaw the storm's peak, really no one did. Um, but weakening is now expected according to all the models and that's what we are observing on satellite imagery. Wind shear is uh, low to moderate still, around 10 to 15 knots. It will rise sharply by the late, later part of this week. Sea surface temperatures remaining warm, they'll cool down later, only not, not until Wednesday or Thursday. Relative humidity will also take a tumble by then as well, so it will all turn against the storm eventually but not for the next two days or so. So that means uh, Dorian will hold on to a lot of its intensity as it makes its closest pass towards Florida and possibly towards Georgia before it really starts to, to weaken. It is starting. The latest uh, cloud top imagery on the infrared is showing some marked decreases in cloud top heights, especially on the northwestern side. The eye is starting to get a little bit more lopsided in the last few frames. Um, certainly on the one minute imagery rapid scan that we're looking at uh, it is showing uh, and hopefully we'll see a more quicker weakening trend especially if we get an eye wall collapse or something like that. We live in hope but I don't think that's going to happen uh, particularly suddenly. It's going to be a very gradual weakening trend from here on in at least until the storm clears Florida. That's all for now. Force 13 is running live coverage all day today just like the last two days as well. You can follow Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com. You can also find our YouTube channel if you're not there already. You may well be. Good chance of that. Subscribe if you haven't. You can also find our Facebook page, search Force 13 all in text, and our Twitter handle, it's at Force 13 on there. 
You can also help the project become even better by becoming a patron. You can see more information about all the benefits involved by visiting patreon.com forward slash force 13. With a special thanks to these people for being our most valued patrons this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.